<laughs> oh, <laughs> why? Why are they doing this? Oh, God. Okay, okay, look, look, to explain uh, my outburst just now, I loved 99% of this episode. This episode was great, good, good action from Topo in 17, we get a little bit of Frieza sauce in there, and then Vegeta, man, Vegeta versus God of Destruction Topo, just going at it. Uh, we got some callbacks to some Dragon Ball Z shit, we got some character development from, uh, from Vegeta, we got a little bit of, uh, stuff about Topo that kind of makes him, like, sort of like a, a hypocrite but whatever, we'll get to that. Um, so it was a good episode, I liked it. Right up until the last scene. The last scene of this episode is just what kills it. And it's such a freaking betrayal, it really is. You know how you have, like, so many interesting, uh, you know, theories for a character, or how the story's gonna progress, and you know, it's like, everybody has a different theory, uh, that doesn't mean that the story's gonna go that way, but it just shows how many interesting ways it could go. Like, I, I was thinking, I was reading so many interesting theories of how this tournament could end, um, some of them were really clever, but then in the back of my mind, I'm like, they're probably not gonna be any of these, but you know what they did? They, they freaking, it looks like they're just gonna turn Jiren into just the standard cliche, you know, ha 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 ha, beware my power kind of villain. And that's such a bullshit thing to do. Because, okay, look, up until this point, I'm not gonna say that, that Jiren had, like, a large amount of freaking character development. He didn't. He was pretty much a blank slate up to this point. And, and by the way, we're gonna have to do something different with this review. Normally, I do it in, like, a linear style, like, from the beginning to end. This time, I gotta start with the with the ending of the episode. I, I gotta start with that at the beginning, and then we'll get to the rest of it. Because I like the vast majority of this, like I said. But I gotta talk about this Ending, okay, so uh, Topo gets eliminated in this episode. All right, so he gets eliminated. Vegeta breaks out all the stops. It's a callback to when he fought against Boo uh, back when he was, uh, you know, Majin, you know, Vegeta, Super Saiyan two Majin, whatever you want to call him. When he detonated, he self destructed, killed himself, tried to take out Boo. All right, so it's like a reflection of that, and that's a pretty cool scene. Topo gets eliminated. Vegeta's still alive, but just barely. Um, and then it's a scene where Jiren is the only remaining member of Universe 11 left, and he's up there on a giant pedestal just kind of staring down Goku, Vegeta, and Seventeen, and he literally just turns over at Topo and he's like, I expected more from you. Well then, you know, uh, good job on defeating Topo, but now let me show you true power, you know, like what, and then he just goes hulks out, and then it's just like, it's like, really? That's what we're doing with Jiren, you know, like, we're just turning him into some, like, the most cliche villain we've all seen before a bajillion times, you know, like, he has another person working with him, and he fails, and he's like, so, you know, you pathetic weakling, I expected more from you. All right, puny humans, allow me to show you true power! Quake in fear, you know? That's, that seems like we're going with this. Now, Jiren, like I said, he's never had character development. I mean, in the manga, he does. In the manga, he's, a, like, kind of an interesting character, and he was just introduced in the manga, so I'm kind of interested in seeing where that's going. But here, it was just, like, it could go either way. Um, you know, you could set him up to be something kind of unique, but they just to choose to scrap that. Um, and you know what? I, I should have seen this coming early on in this episode, because there's a scene where Goku and Vegeta are just fighting with Jiren, uh, you know, at the beginning of the episode, and there's a scene where Jiren, it, he says, you know, you impotent bastards, and he kind of knocks them away. And I, I thought that, I thought that was kind of weird, coming from Jiren, you know, because up to this point, Jiren's been, like, calm, collective, you know, almost to the point where he doesn't have a personality. Um, you know, he's just deflecting blows, knocking people back. Here, he's like, impotent bastards, you know, knocking them away, and I'm thinking, that's kind of weird that he would say something like that. But then at the end of the episode, it's, like, reaffirmed, like, yep, yep, this is Jiren, yeah, I'm big and strong, I'm gonna wipe you out! Ugh. All I hope is that... I, I, I have no hope for Jiren for the remainder of the anime. We got, like, what, like, six episodes left? Like, there's there's probably not gonna be a moment where Jiren's gonna be like, Oh, by the way, he was this interesting character the whole time, so... Scrap Jiren! Scrap anime Jiren! Standard villain, number 70,000, here you go, have at it. He's a big, tough guy, he's really strong, he's like, I wanna beat you down! So that's, that's how it is now. 
So all I can hope for is that the manga does it better. <laughs> That's all I got. I hope though, and the manga's already kind of done it better because they introduced him in a way that was different than the anime and actually gave him some more dialogue and actually gave him kind of like some other stuff going on with him. But in this episode and for the remainder of the anime, he's just whatever. So I've kind of just lost cause. Just, I mean, we're probably going to see some cool fighting, a lot of neat moves and everything like that as um, Seventeen and Frieza, Goku and Vegeta all team up to take down uh, Jiren. We're going to see some cool fights, but Jiren himself is just going to be reduced to just paint by numbers villain that's that's all we're going with here and it's a shame uh, but anyway yeah so let's get into the episode part of the episode i did like all right so let's get into the majority of it um so the episode uh continues right where the last one left off topo versus 17 they have an energy clash uh you know 17 loses that energy class he just keeps moving around the battlefield trying in any way possible to take on topo topo is kind of like just lording over him like there's simply no way you can win uh boy uh there's no attack you can do that could possibly even touch me let alone hurt me y you're not gonna win this uh the best idea 17 has and this is one of those things you ever have a moment when like you have the the peanut gallery you have like uh the, like the other members of team universe 7 in the bleachers like way to go you did great and you're sitting there like no <laughs> that was one of these moments where um 17 is hiding behind a pillar and Topo uses Hakai energy to make like a massive hole in that pillar. 17 dodges, then the pillar collapses because there's a giant hole in it now. So 17 gets an idea. He jumps behind another pillar. Topo does the exact same thing with the Hakai energy, makes a hole in it. And 17's like, jumps out. He's like, ha, ah, screw you. And he launches a key attack to destroy the pillar and the rubble falls on, on Topo. And all of the members of Team Universe 7 are like, way to go, 17. You knocked the rubble on him. Yeah, he used the Hawkeye energy to his benefit! Yeah, way to go! Okay. 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 Okay, they're fucking rocks! They're rocks! Granted, they're rocks from, like, this incredibly powerful substance called Kachin Kachin, the, like, strongest substance in all of the universe, whatever, but they're rocks! that have been leveled and destroyed and wrecked all over the tournament. The tournament ground started off as a nice, clean, like you could free, like, like true level from Rick and Morty, and now it's like a freaking rock quarry, all right? If you thought for one fucking millisecond that those thing, a pile of rocks would have stopped Topo, you are functionally retarded. I have no other way of describing this. <sighs> Oh my god, I mean, it's good to be hopeful, I guess. Like, yeah, 17, you did it! Way to go! The rocks, okay? <laughs> and, and, and way to go, Topo just breaks out of it. Because, you know, rocks versus destruction energy of the freaking gods! Holy crap, that was just, that wasn't even a bet. I wasn't even mad, it was just anything just funny. It's just hilarious. Okay, 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 okay. So, so after the rock, after the rock gambit doesn't work, um, he, he just continues to, you know, just dodge attacks and stuff. Topo is switching back and forth between his Hawkeye death ball and just his regular Justice Flash shit. Um, eventually Frieza shows back up. Yeah, Frieza turned out to be okay after getting his head basically stress-balled the hell out of by uh, Topo last episode. You know, a lot of people were coming up with interesting theories, and that was one of those things, like, oh, look at all these interesting theories. That Frieza was going to be knocked out on the side of the of the Tournament of Power arena, and he would have been the last one left. Like, like um, you know, 17 and, and would have gotten knocked off by Topo, and then maybe Vegeta and Jiren and, and, and Topo would have gotten knocked off, and then Frieza's the last one remaining, but he's unconscious, but he's still in the tournament grounds, so he wins, and he gets the wish. That was a lot of interesting theories, but no, Frieza's just back now. He's fine, I guess. I mean, he doesn't. He actually looks like he's in better condition than he was before he got crushed by Topo. Um, I mean, after he got crushed by Topo. But um, so he he fires this paralysis orb at at Topo. It's like a compressed ball of key that like traps him and he's paralyzed. He can't move because Frieza can just do that now. I don't recall him ever using a technique like that before in the series. Um, you know, maybe that's the thing he used when, like, he rose Krillin off the ground. He couldn't move, and then he blew him up. Maybe that was the same move. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, he does that. Uh, but we don't really get to see much of Frieza in this episode. Frieza's just kind of there. Um, and then what happens is it uh, the fight eventually shifts 
from uh, 17 and Frieza versus Topo to Vegeta versus Topo, Goku versus Jiren. Because what happens is they all kind of get, like, knocked into, like, the same area, and Topo and Jiren are kind of coordinating because they've been on a team forever, so they're like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, and they know what to do just by, like, signals and shit. And Jiren launches an energy ball that kind of hits 17 and Frieza, and we don't hear much of them until... We don't hear it from Frieza for the rest of the episode, period. 17 shows up at the end. But that ball that Jiren shot, they, they took head on. Uh, meanwhile, Frigida has to fight against Topo, and then Goku just kind of keeps Jiren at bay. 17 and Frieza are just kind of benched for the majority of the episode. So it's now Vegeta versus Topo, which is what we expected from, you know, the scenes and everything like that uh, from the previews last episode. Um, and, and, you know, Vegeta does a decent job at first. You know, he's he, he's taking damage, but, you know, he's holding his own against God of Destruction. He's able to touch him, you know, here. Um, and, and he brings up to Topo, he's like, you know, after all that talk about justice, now you've just switched over to destruction. It's basically like you've just done a palette swap. It's just like, justice, justice! And now, like, five seconds later, you're like destruction and topo brings up you know if justice isn't good enough to protect our universe then it's worthless and then you're just sitting there like okay yeah but you understand how that's kind of like you, you have very shallow morals and and you're very hypocritical in that point where you're like uh you're all about justice and what justice represents and what it means and how you use it to protect the downtrodden and at, at the drop of a hat you will just swap that out with destruction. This is sounding very familiar to Flambe from the recent One Piece chapter. What is with freaking anime care? You can tell when it's either a shitty character in terms of like the writing or just like when they're designed to be a shitty character, when they just can switch their morals on and off like a freaking light switch, you know? Because that, that's not how people work, all right? Like, you could have something, like, I could be devoted to justice my entire life. Like, you know what? I think it's true justice... And then all of a sudden, I just, like, see something happen where, like, a police officer robs, like, a, an innocent citizen, and instantly my whole freaking purview, like, at the drop of a switch is just like, well, guess justice is bullshit, rape and murder, you know, like, normal people don't work like this, it's a little bit more complicated than that. But okay, okay, whatever. Yeah, he switches over to, to destruction mode. Um, so you know where, where, where Topo's at on the freaking moral spectrum. Maybe, maybe having access to the God of Destruction power, maybe that, like, corrupts him a little bit, changes his philosophy a little. I don't know. Um, but the, the point of the matter here is that Vegeta gets knocked into a wall and he's remembering about, you know, all the things that are important to him. You know, obviously his family, Bulma, Trunks, and Bola, his promise to Kaba, which he brings up in this episode to revive universe six and he's thinking you know what this guy just tosses away his convictions just like that that is despicable that is pathetic i am not gonna lose to this piece of shit and then that's when vegeta is like this is what i'm fighting for and i'm not going to abandon that and then that's when vegeta just goes rage mode and just starts beating the crap out of topo he throws up Hakai energy, Vegeta just punches right through that shit, knocks him into a wall, and it's just this, uh, it, he launches a final flash, and it's basically, not, not a final flash, no, the, he tries final flash earlier in the episode, and that kind of gets defeated, but then after his motivations are, are, you know, cemented, he goes and uses the same technique, his self-destruct technique he used against Boo, and it results in this energy ball clash of Hakai versus this, this, uh, detonation that he's using, right? So he does that, and, um, you know, you you even have uh, Vermood and uh, the uh, Supreme Kai of Universe 11. I think his name is just literally Kai. They're just off on the side and they're visibly nervous. They're like, what's going on? And Vermood is just like, y y y use the Hakai energy, just blow everything away! You know, um, and that's what their their plan is. Um, and Topo's trying, but G Vegeta's just pounding through it. So there's the energy blast and it's just, it's insanity at this point in the episode. It's absolute insanity. You have no idea what the hell is going to happen. And then the arena the straight up arena just gets obliterated like it's still there but i mean a big like half of this freaking thing just gets obliterated by by the uh, a death ball clash and uh at the end of this it's just like really quiet we don't know what happened uh topo then appears on the bleachers so he was eliminated and then everyone's like okay well what's up with vegeta cuz the last time he did this he 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 died kind of a little case of death um but we see here that yes Vegeta is in fact alive, um, and the only explanation we get for this really is that when he used this technique against Boo, you know, he was, you know, taking all the energy inside of him 
and he was releasing it at once, and his body just couldn't withstand it, so his body was destroyed as well. Here, the explanation we get is, yeah, his key is a lot stronger too, plus you have to keep in mind that Super Saiyan God Blue has better key control, but also his body is trained at a higher level too. So the energy that he had released, his body could tank that. Barely, because he's, you know, powered down, obviously, and he's, like, you know, exhausted to the point where he's, like, you know, barely able to stand up. Which, of course, I think is going to be disregarded in the next episode, because in the next episode previews, we see him back in his Limit Breaker Ultra Instinct Attack form Blue 2 move, so whatever. Um, but yeah, that's the end of the episode, where Vegeta's there, 17 pops out of the rubble, he's barely, you know, he's kind of injured as well, we have no idea what the hell Freeze is up to, and then, uh, we have four minutes left of the Tournament of Power remaining, and that's when freaking Jiren does his, his little moment where he's just like, uh, how pathetic, I expected more from you, see that bullshit right there, I hate, that is the most cliche crap you would hear from any other anime character, I understand Dragon Ball is not, like, the most unique in terms of character development, we're not going to see some really deep, like, six or seven layers of a character here. But give us something new. I thought Jiren was going to be something at least a little different, you know. And he was just like, he was blank up to this point, and they just decided to throw this, this persona at him. And that's what we're left with. So it's like... You know what? Get, you, get Next episode, just grab your fucking popcorn. I don't even really need to do reviews at this point. I could basically just sit back for this. This entire G-Ren fight, I, I could just sit back and just be like, Whoa! Wow, man! What the hell? Crazy! What? That could be the entire review for the next few episodes. I can guarantee that now. We're not going to get anything interesting from G-Ren, I can tell you that much. Topo, way more interesting. That's all I got. I mean, that's all I got. Uh, Jiren fights next episode. What is this? Episode 126. We're over at 131. So I don't know. I don't know. Fucking three episodes with Jiren. Like 30, you know, 27, 28, 29. 30 is the wish for the dragon episode. Like the wrap up the tournament. And then they have a last episode where just everybody's happy and together. I, I, I guess. Universe 6 is revived. So there you go. I don't fucking know. <sighs> You know, I shouldn't have been mad. I shouldn't be mad. I should be like, you know, I expected this. You know, I didn't expect an ending that was going to be really all that interesting. In the back of my mind, I always knew it was kind of going to come down to this, but I am a little disappointed if we're honest with ourselves. Uh, you know, maybe the movie in December, maybe that'll be better. Maybe that'll give us an interesting villain. You know, the last few movies have been pretty good. Battle of Gods, Resurrection F, they did some pretty cool things for the franchise, so maybe we'll get something like that, you know? And then, you know, there might be a new anime after that, a continuation of Super called Ultra Super Mega or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Ah, I'm just not looking forward to these next uh, few episodes, guys. I'm thinking that it's, uh, we were expecting something, and we're gonna, we were expecting something above average, and we're just gonna get... basic. <laughs> just basic <laughs> all right well that's all i got really i can't I mean, anything else beyond this it was a cool fight cool battle cool episode vegeta got to see some awesome fights character development with him but beyond that end of the episode was crap and what we're gonna get in the future is gonna be crap too so sorry to end on a sour note but later vados is still hot positive note vados and vados and macarita yeah yeah, all wet and covered in some form of oil, wrestling in a giant pot of mochi. You're welcome. Later.